What is up guys? I hope you're all doing wonderful and welcome back to another video in the garage with the M4 GTS. Today is an exciting day. We have a basic maintenance part that we're going to install and then also I need to get the car ready for the new custom cage that is being built for this M4 GTS that didn't come with its factory roll cage. So I did a lot of research on this roll cage trying to find the the right people to custom fabricate one, or even if I could find one that was OEM that was used. Basically it came down to this. If I wanted to buy a used OEM cage, it was somewhere around eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 just to get that cage in this car, which is a lot of money, obviously. <laughs> and really I did not want to have to spend that much on a roll cage for this car. I knew that eventually I'd be able to find a company that could custom make one that would fit this car that would look almost identical to OEM because this car comes from the factory with factory mounting points for a half cage. Not only are there factory mounting points, but they're actually threaded and everything. So once you build out the plates, build out the rest of the cage, it literally just bolts right in. So obviously my main concerns were, you know, it had to line up with the factory mounting points, had to look rather OEM. And then of course there's the powder coating and everything to make it just the finish of it look as identical as possible to an OEM roll cage. So I found a local company called CT Raceworks here in Monroe, which is in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they're actually right by the shop that I go to, CES Motorsport. These guys basically build custom race cars. They do all custom fabrication and they manufacture a whole line of different automotive parts for cars. I had quite a few friends in the industry recommend them and I had an in there. So it just made perfect sense. The fact that they're local to me and that they could do this relatively quickly was definitely a huge plus. So I ran over this morning and met with them. They took a look at the car just to make sure that this is something that we can accomplish. We looked at all of the drawings of the OEM cage and everything is going to be, this is going to be good. It's going to be near factory, almost perfect, like 95% OEM, almost identical. And then of course I'm going to have the cage custom powder coated in the factory acid orange that comes from BMW. I thought about doing other colors, but honestly, I'd like to keep some of the things on this car without having to change them down the line as close to OEM and factory as possible. So that's why I went with the acid orange. So today, really quick, I have to remove some of the interior stuff. I've never taken out any of this like rear seat delete in this car particularly, but I can't imagine it's that difficult. So I'm gonna pull out the rear seat delete, pull out the side bolster panels that are in the rear, and that is going to allow them to measure out all the brackets and everything that they need to make for the end plates on the actual roll cage itself. And then I'll run over there this afternoon and they're gonna do the, basically begin the process of building this cage. The actual building portion of it is going to be in August. So next month is when we're going to start it. And it really shouldn't take too long. Like this is what these guys do for a living. So it's pretty simple for them. We're just going to be very diligent trying to match this to OEM as close as possible. So after I pull all that stuff out, we're going to hop into replacing the stone filter in the water injection system in the M4 GTS. You guys watched a previous video. I was talking about the common issues with these cars. One of them is replacing the stone filter that can corrode over time and basically just calcify and gunk up, which can lead to blockage in your water injection system if you have an M4 GTS. I didn't see a ton of information out there on this topic, so that's kind of why I wanted to make the video. I know this doesn't apply to all of you guys, but if you are an M4 GTS owner and you're looking how to do this, uh, I basically looked it up on ISTA, got all of the tech information that I needed to just do this DIY at home, and it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna pop everything out of the rear seat, show you where the cage factory mounts are, and then we'll go ahead and start on the stone filter in the water injection system. Man, I will say I am very excited to finally get a cage put in this car. It just feels so weird and bare without it. <laughs> Having an M4 GTS without a cage. So you can see the factory mounting points right there. I'll show you the other one back behind there once I remove everything. I'll also have the little screw points for the harnesses. And then there's like a little taco piece that goes in the middle to match the OEM cage. We'll have that as well. We looked at where the factory cage was sitting in relation to the dome light. And it's a couple inches behind that also. So all the angles and everything is going to be pretty much damn near perfect to OEM. We'll start with this guy over here. That really just pop off the top like that. Sort of have to bend it a little bit. Like so, it's all Alcantara too, which is really nice. So I wanted to keep the factory, everything in the rear, I wanted to keep it factory for obvious reasons. These are really nice pieces by BMW. So pretty simple, just popping out this tab and then work out the bottom portion. Same thing with this side. So you can see down here, this is where the factory mounting points are in the rear, which are at the lower side of 
the rear seat delete and everything is threaded too so it's really nice it's going to be very easy to install this once it's fabricated looks like it's three mounting points total back here and then we'll have to remove the full rear seat delete as well so they can measure out this one and make the plates for that. I believe there's also gonna be three holes in here, but we'll find out once we remove this. All right, so we got a series of T30s all across here, and then we've got some back here as well. We're gonna pull those out. That should release this part. This is where my factory fire extinguisher will go. I am gonna source an OEM one and try and put that in here as well, just to have like the complete M4 GTS interior. That will be down the line in the future. So it looks like this comes out in three pieces. You've got this guy right here, this guy right here, and then that whole center back piece. So we'll remove this one, literally lifts right out. And as you can see right here, this is where the front of the cage mounts. So it actually looks like it's four bolts that will hold it in up here and everything is threaded. So it's gonna make it nice and easy for them to install it and make their plates. Man, I'm really looking forward to this. It's gonna turn out, hopefully, super nice. So now that I have those two out looking at this, I think we're going to be good in terms of what they need to measure. Um, you can obviously access everything right here. It's fully visible and leaving this in will also kind of tell them what areas they need to avoid when they're running the actual cage itself. It's really smart of BMW to actually make this into three parts. It's a lot easier to install and remove, especially when you have a cage going in here. Like on my E36, I had one that was just the entire piece was one part as well as that so it was just two big pieces and when you install it with a cage it was just an absolute nightmare to get everything to fit with the cage in there so it'd be very strategic about how you put it in so this is actually going to be good for us um, i'm going to go ahead and just clean all this up vacuum all the shit out of the back and then i'll be able to run back over there this afternoon and have those guys start the process i'll probably just throw these little bolts back in there so i don't lose them but yeah let's start on that stone filter all right so moving on to the stone filter portion this is the actual part number from bmw i went ahead and bought Two of them, I think they're like 40 bucks a pop for each little filter, but I'll show you everything that they give you in this kit. So this is the actual filter itself, looks like that. And then you have a couple of springs and a couple of washers. So I'm gonna show you guys how to remove the old one. We'll take a look at it. I mean, I don't know if it's even in bad condition, but this is just one of those things after reading up a lot online that these can calcify and corrode over time. So it's just something that you want to do routinely. I don't know, I'd say every 5,000, 10,000 miles or so on this car. I have no idea if mine has ever been replaced. I do know that the water valve block has been replaced on this car with the updated version, which was also a common issue from BMW. So we are good there, but I don't know if they replaced that stone filter. So we're gonna open up the back. Of course, we're gonna be taking this off right here so here is everything in the back this is going to be your pump right here and this back here will be the valve block so the piece that we actually need to remove is this right here that is where the stone filter sits right underneath this so we're going to go ahead and pop this out in order to get that bolt out that is holding in the stone filter we're going to use a 17 millimeter So it's gonna be very difficult to see, but inside of there, you can already see some corrosion on our stone filter. So we need to get that out. So these are the tweezers we're gonna remove the filter with, a little sharp point, pretty tiny. All right, so we got the filter out, and as you can see, it is pretty nasty and corroded. So this is what we're trying to avoid. And this just happens from that water sitting in there, just slowly adding a bunch of corrosion, not to mention anything that the filter catches inside of the system. So in order to get it out, it's kind of hard to get in there. I ended up using just these little tweezers and bent out the tips a little bit to make it fit perfectly, but I was able to finesse it. I didn't want to like scrape around too much in there because you don't want to rub off all of the corrosion inside of that little cylinder. So if you look at everything that BMW gives you when you order this part, you have two springs and then you have these two little O-rings. This O-ring is actually inside of the little cylinder inside of the block valve. So if we look in there, it'd be very difficult for you guys to see, but there's, you can see that O-ring in there. So we'll go ahead and pull that out with the tweezers as well. And if you can just clean out this 
area that leads into the actual block valve itself. You can use like some compressed air or just like simply vacuum um, over it to remove any of like the loose debris. You could even use like a Q-tip with some isopropyl to clean out the inside if you needed to. And then you also have this larger O-ring right here that goes on the end of this nut. So we'll replace that as well. And it looks like there's just one spring which was on this actual nut too. So we'll just use one of these springs. I don't know if they just give you an extra one or what, but we'll just use one of these springs to replace so we have a nice fresh one and then we can go ahead and reinstall everything. That looks clean. Here is the new O-ring going in. Here's that old filthy one replaced with a brand new one. So this number 10 should be facing up and this side will be facing down. According to ISTA, the torque specs are 18 newton meters for this bolt. So we are officially good to go for, I would say, I don't know, another 5,000 miles or so. I guess I'll just keep routinely checking this to make sure that it doesn't corrode up as bad as this. I've seen a lot worse. Like I've seen super calcified and very corroded filters. I would say this is probably on the medium level. Um, who knows when this was replaced? So I don't know how old this is, but I'll just kind of keep track of my new one and go from there. Definitely is a big difference though. And you can just imagine all of this stuff is getting into the water injection system, which can corrode and clog things and yeah so these are just expensive systems by nature from BMW and you just want to do your best to keep the lines as clean as possible and everything good so we are solid all right so I gotta head back out to CT Raceworks and meet up with those guys so they can start taking measurements on the cage and I'm gonna make future videos kind of bring you guys along the process of making this cage and obviously show you how it turns out I'm really really excited for this it's like the only crutch with this car the one thing that's missing was the factory cage so it's just gonna look a hell of a lot better having more of like an OEM interior and then I can get my fire extinguisher and everything in here and it's gonna look look muy Perfecto. If I can get some footage at the shop while they're measuring up and everything, I will do so. But um, that is gonna wrap up today's video. It's an easy one, you guys. I just wanted to make a couple of videos because there's really not a whole lot of content out there about M4 GTSs in specific and like ownership experience and just kind of like little DIYs like this, things to look out for. So I, you know, I've always enjoyed making these type of videos no matter what type of car I own. And so that's sort of why you see a little bit of that content coming out. But I will make some general videos just based on like F series, F chat, M4s, M3s, stuff like that, S55, as we move along into other projects. You guys have noticed that we've got some other things going on, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Lots on deck, you guys, lots happening. So that is gonna wrap up today's video. I appreciate you guys. If you need anything, I'll have all of the parts linked down below, as well as the tools. Love y'all, see you in the next one. Peace. just got all the measuring done. He was just going through and measuring up where those plates are gonna land for the cage in the back. Got everything handled. The next step for me personally is to go online and find the uh, paint samples, the powder samples, and then they're gonna have the thing powder coated in whichever color I want. So I'm gonna order in a couple samples and then compare it to the acid orange that's on my wheels and my front splitter. Find the best perfect match that I can 
and then that's what we'll end up having the entire cage uh, powder coated in. So they're gonna start on the roll cage floor mounts and then I'm gonna come back, make sure that everything is good, that they fit properly, and then we drop the car off to have everything constructed into the back. They will obviously need the car for that to make sure that everything fits perfectly. So we are officially on our way to getting this cage built and I am hyped. Not the name, motherfucker!